So welcome to the JDeveloper extension for Glassfish uh, demo. So JDeveloper 11, 1, 2, 3 actually comes in with the ability to create connection to an external Glassfish server. So you can actually go to the application server and create a new application server connection um, to a standalone server of type Glassfish. Right up here. I'm going to show you some of the things that the extension adds to those capabilities. Specifically what you get is you get a few new buttons here, you get a menu option with the same shortcuts here, and what those allow you to do is actually interact with the external server in terms of starting, stopping it, starting it in debug, and also going to the administrator console. In order for the extension to work properly, you need to have a Glassfish instance installed on your machine, and then under Tools Preferences, you'll go over to the Glassfish Preferences, and set up the information about your start command, stop command, start in debug mode. And what you have here is the basic uh, settings that would work for a default installation of Glassfish. So those basically work on my machine. Once you set those up, you should be ready to start developing an application. So let's go and build a new Java E application with JDeveloper. Okay. Create a prefix. And Java e application creates two projects for us, a model one and a view controller. What you probably want to do is in the view controller go into the Java e application and switch the context to it. So possibly call it foo2. And you can copy this a bit here as well. That would just make it easier for you to, to find your application once you actually create it. Then you can go over and create a new page. You get the visual editor for JSF in JDeveloper, and you can start dragging over and positioning all sorts of uh, items on your page. So maybe a couple of command buttons, maybe add an input text, um, and of course you can do all the regular things like surround with, which will allow you to surround it, for example, with a panel grid that has two columns, for example. Okay, so you got the nice layout for your page. Anyway, once your page is done and you're happy with how it looks and behaves, you can save it, go into your project, and you'll be able to choose Deploy. Okay? And say that you want to deploy to an application server, and you can actually choose to create a new application server connection. Okay? Um, before I actually create this, me just remember that I actually need to start the server, so let's start the Glassfish instance. That actually pops up a separate window that starts the server for us. Okay, and now let's go back here, choose deploy to an application server, again creating a new connection to a Glassfish server, so make sure to choose Glassfish over here. Okay, provide the username for the administrator, Okay, if you played with any of the ports in the installation the way I did, so you might need to change those here. And then you should be able to test your connection and make sure that everything works correctly. Right. So now that you created the connection, you can actually take your raw file and deploy it to this server connection. This pops up the deployment tab over here. JDeveloper takes your application, package it into a raw file that you can find over here. Okay, and then deploys it to the server with this context tool. At this point, you should be able to go into actually your browser and put in the information to access your page. And voila, your page shows up in the browser. That's the basic thing. Um, let's see a little bit more of advanced usage. Maybe you actually need to debug your code. So what you want to do is you actually want to stop your Glassfish server. This would go out again, pop up a window, and would stop your Glassfish. And then you can start Glassfish in debug mode. So this is the little question mark up here, if you didn't understand what the icon actually means. Let's maybe put some code into our application. So we'll create a quickly a new manage bin. And we'll have an action in this manage bin, and over here we can just put in a 
couple of statements. this and then we can of course put breakpoints in our code okay so this breakpoint will be reached when I click this button right and um, what you want to do now is actually configure your project to have a um, remote debugging enabled so double click your project go into the run debug profile click edit and click on remote debug Oh, the, the other thing you might want to note here is um, there's information about remote debugging over here in terms of ports and things like that that you might need to set again if you're not starting it on the same port. Then you save everything, deploy the application again because we have a new part for it, a new manage bin. So your application is being undeployed, then deployed again. And once it's done, you can actually say, let's debug. Okay, you will be prompted to decide which port you're actually going to be debugging on. Uh, if you look at the command line, we started the debugging on port 9009. So we're going to update it here to say 9009 and click OK. Okay, JDeveloper would go off and connect to the remote server. And now you can go back to your browser and invoke the page again. Okay. When your page loads, you can click the button, which will then cause JDeveloper to come up and hit the breakpoint. And at this stage, you can basically go over and look at your code, evaluate data, and do whatever you need in the debugger. Um, one last thing that you can do here. Uh, there's this button, which is starting the Glassfish Admin Console. Basically, it just pops up the URL uh, to access the Admin Console for your web server, um, where you can go ahead and undeploy applications, set data sources, things like that. So, just go in here, admin, your password, login, and you should be able from here to see the application you just deployed and possibly set other properties for it.